So we have three different uh, disc brake pads here. This is the Fiat 124 Spider. Uh, this is from a Mercedes SL, and uh, this is from a uh, Honda Element. Now these are three very different vehicles. The Fiat is much older and a lighter kind of vehicle, but it has this in common with the other pads, a metal backing plate and a uh, thickness of friction material, and it's a sort of a large swept area. But the Mercedes is a much more modern car, much heavier. It's got a lot more uh, surface area, but it still shares in common that uh, metal backing plate and the thickness of friction material. Now, these are both sets of front brake pads where most of the work is done. This is from a uh, Honda Element, and it's the rear brake pads, which are much smaller. They don't do quite as much work, but they still have that feature of a metal backing plate, friction material, and a sur surface for swept area. The thing that determines how long your brakes are going to last is how long this friction material takes to wear down. And you can see we're going to use this handy depth gauge here, and just it will tell us the thickness of those front pads, and in this case, we have about uh, 12 millimeter of, let's bring that in the light here, but how can you tell before they're all worn up so that you can safely replace the pads while you still have some braking ability and you haven't damaged the other components like the caliper or the disc rotor. Now the oldest and simplest of these pads are the ones from the early 70s uh, Fiat Spider, and all they did was they allowed the metal backing plate, unless you check the wheel every once in a while, you'd pull it off and measure it with one of those gauges, you basically waited until the metal backing plate contacted the brake rotor itself and made a horrible noise and by then you knew it was, your brakes were gone. Now, with the much uh, more modern car, Honda did a very clever thing. They also have an audible alarm, but this one's a little safer. What they did was they have this little bent piece of metal that's attached to the backing plate, and it also extends to right next to the friction material. So as the friction material wears down, there's going to come a point while you still have braking power, and that's going to contact the rotor, and it's going to make a very audible sound. So even if you don't know anything about brakes, you'll hear a noise, you'll take it to your auto technician, he's going to pull it up on the lift and say, oh yeah, guess what, your brake pads are way worn down, let's replace those before they damage the rotor. Now, the more advanced one out of all of these is, of course, the Mercedes, and this not only has much larger pads, and again, it's about the same thickness, about 12 millimeter, but you'll also notice, and let me see if I can bring this up, there's a very tiny hole here. There's a hole, and into that goes this electric wire sensor, and it's very cool. It's got a spike to it, and it's going to fit in that hole. It's going to clip in this little notch at the back of the pad, and that's going to make contact with the brake rotor once the pads wear down to that level. Your pads have gotten very thin, you'll still have friction material and braking power. It's going to erode the insulation on that wire, complete an electrical circuit, and light a bulb on your dash. So each one of these types of pads has their own sort of indicator to tell you when to replace them. This one, probably the one you want to pay most attention to because it will wear out and damage your uh, calipers and maybe your rotor before you realize it. This one is probably the most advanced, and then of course the happy medium in between is the idea of having an actual audible piece of metal that's going to scrape against the rotor and let you know early.